Here we'll consider some Genexus objects that prove useful at the time of encapsulating functionalities and organizing objects in our knowledge base. To start with, let's consider modules. Modules are Genexus objects acting as containers that enable us to group objects from our KB and facilitate the understanding thereof, as well as its maintenance and the integration of objects with other KBs. When we create a knowledge base, the root module is then created, and by default, all the objects we create remain in that module. Modules and folders aid us in organizing objects. However, there are conceptual differences between modules and folders. Modules help in encapsulating and modularizing parts of the KB, with the possibility of determining which objects are visible from other objects and which are not, as we will see later. Folders, on the other hand, act as containers that only help in organizing objects by separating them according to specific criteria. Along with modules, they create a hierarchical tree where the root is always a module, as in the case of the root module. We can see this in KB Explorer. Modules may have module children, but folders may not have modules as their children. As a general rule, we could say that it's possible to use modules to encapsulate and folders for organizing objects within the module. In order to add an object to a module, we could drag it to the module in KB Explorer, or otherwise click the right button on the module and then New Object, or otherwise change the value of the object's module folder property. Packed modules that have been shared with us may be viewed through the Knowledge Manager Manage Module References menu. For each module available, we can see its information to decide whether we will install it in our KB. And if we do, it will be saved under the References node of KB Explorer, as opposed to objects we create, which are saved in the root module by default. We cannot modify the objects of these modules, we view them as read-only, which are already compiled. So, when we press F5, it's not necessary to specify or generate them, and so on. However, we will be able to use them freely from the objects in our application, using all the functionalities they have available. Any member of the community may create, share, or even sell his or her modules through the marketplace. One of these is the Genexus module, also known as Genexus Core. The Genexus module is distributed automatically and installed in all KBs. And, as any external mode of our application, we'll find it in the References node. It comprises a series of submodules that contain a set of APIs with their corresponding domains and SDTs. These enable us to interact with the various technologies, devices, sensors, applications, and so on. These APIs are implemented as external objects which we will see next. You can find further information on the module object at the following wiki link. Now let's see what external objects are. External objects are Genexus objects that enable us access to external resources of our KB, as if they were another object in the KB. This is why they're increasingly more frequent and important in our web and mobile device applications. Let's now see how to use them. We may import different types of resources into our KB. For instance, when we have something programmed in .NET, we may generate a DLL and import it into the KB as an external object. Then, from our app, we may invoke the functions included in the DLL as if they were procedures programmed in Genexus. The same happens with classes created in Java. We may also import resources stores and other external sources, like Java Beans programs, or procedures stored in a database, web services, both SOAP and REST, SAP modules, JSON files generated by any application, or XML schema. Genexus also provides a set of external objects that are located in the root module or in the Genexus module that enable us access to a variety of resources, such as APIs for interacting with the hardware, or native applications of mobile devices, or APIs to have access to the server, to events, 
or to Windows applications such as the Notepad, as well as to external sites for using maps and social networks, among other things. There are also external objects published on the Genexus Marketplace that we may include in our application. The best way to create an external object is to use a wizard. If we go to the Tools menu and select Application Integration, we'll see the various resources to be imported, and a specific wizard will be executed for that resource. Upon finalizing the wizard, the external object created will be automatically associated with the resource. All the properties of the external object will be adjusted in accordance with the type or resources that have been imported. We may also create an external object with new object, just like with any other Genexus object, though in that case, we'll need to set up its properties, methods, and events manually. Once we've created the external object based on the properties that correspond to the external object we wish to use, it'll be available, just like any other data type in the knowledge base. We use this in the same way as any other type of extended data, by defining a variable of that type. And then we call the methods and or set up the properties we need. You can find further information on external objects if you go to this link on the screen.